What is going on everyone and welcome to Cart 63. My name is Ben. Thank you very much for stopping by this channel and patronizing me with your time. Is that correct? Did I nail it? Third time's charm. I bet you I bet you I got it that time correctly. <laughs> if you uh if you didn't mind uh hitting a like on the video if you're new here. Uh welcome. And could you subscribe to the channel? That would be sweet. Uh, I hear crackling in the background. I just fired up a, uh, a bonfire, a little bonfire. It's a little, little, little campfire action on this here uh, holiday weekend. Um, so I had a, you know, a series of questions from a UAS racer. He was asking me about some clutching things, and I thought, you know what? I love it when those just uh, kind of naturally happen. They, you know, just by happenstance, he happened to be asking questions about this. So one of the things that I had on my list to do, and I thought, what a perfect time to address this thing in uh, clutch adjusting. Now, uh, we'll start off here. A lot of you send your clutches out for building by a clutch builder, which is fantastic. I am going to do a video on my opinion on that, uh, what they can do, what they can't do, not so much what they can't do, what they can do and what they're gonna do for you, uh, what, what services they offer for that. But let's say that you get a clutch in your possession and your motor requires maybe a little bit of adjustment. You know, are, are is this something that you're going to be able to do on your own, on, on your own? on your own <laughs> and how do you go about doing it? So I have a little bit of footage I'm gonna show uh, maybe a little bit later in the video uh, of basically old school setting your clutch. And it's not so much old school as it just makes sense how to do this. You're going to make a clutch adjustment and then you're going to set the cart on the ground. You're going to watch your tack display for what RPM you, know, you feel the clutch come in and hit on, and I, I want to describe a little bit about that. Okay, first things first, we are talking about disc clutch. Uh, I don't want to talk about drum clutches because honestly, I've never run one. I know that on a drum clutch, basically you, they have a set set of springs and maybe some different shoe patterns or something that would set your engagement at whatever your engine requires. Now, I don't know anything other than I've seen them in action. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> but my, my, I won't even say expertise. What I know is disc clutches. Your standard disc clutches that you get from Bully, that you get from Lakatus, that uh, there's Gators, there's this and that. They've got, they've got a whole bunch. Very similar design for six spring, you know, type of scenarios here. Uh, what kind of clutches I'm actually talking about. Well, the basic premise is you have uh, clutch springs and they have a thickness to them. Those are, you know, made in different thicknesses to adjust on your engagement, whether you want a low engagement, a high engagement, you know, basically a, a thinner style uh, spring will put up less tension, therefore uh, things are able to come together easier. A thicker gauge would, I believe I got this correct, uh, yeah, a thicker gauge offers more tension, so it's harder for the clutch plates to, to come together, so, the, the, uh, how, how tall you have them set all makes for what engagement goes on your cart. Now, I personally run a jack shaft, so it's a little different. It's just a bit of math. Uh, basically, a jack shaft, you either have like a chain or in our case, a belt drive side. You take the driven and you divide that by the driver and that gives you one ratio. And then you have your chain side, which you guys normally would have. You have your clutch, which uh, you would... Uh, divide into the rear gear, then you times those together, you come up with an overall ratio. I did a video on uh, jack shaft calculations before, but that's how it basically works. So uh, regardless of if you have a jack shaft or not jack shaft, the basic premise is when you, you go clockwise, that would be turning the screw in. That is creating more tension on the spring that is going to raise your engagement. So if your engagement is too low and you need the clutch to come in higher, you're going to turn that in and create more tension on that spring. Just the opposite of that, if you need the clutch to come in lower, a lower RPM, 3,500, four grand, whatever, I don't know what RPM you, know, you actually need it set at, but 
if you need it to come in lower, you're going to take tension off those springs. So you're going to back that out, you know, uh, and then allow that spring to raise up. Now, some of the tricks or tools of the trade, I guess, is you need a spring height gauge. I have two of them. One I got from Buller, I believe, and then the other one I've had for quite a while. And basically, you're just going to slip that over top of the clutch spring. It's going to give you a reading in thousands of how high that clutch spring is. Basically, what I use this for, you know, unless a, a manufacturer gives you a specific height that it wants for Buller, for example, when I was running my Sedam on a jack shaft system, it was 220 thousandths and a bolt in every other lever. I just remember that from back when I used that, but 220 thousandths high were the sp uh, purple springs that I used with whatever caps they have. It was sp specific to Bully, you know, pretty much only. It's not specific to these different clutches that I run now, but. Um, I've, I've taken that knowledge and just what you want to do is have them all be even. So when you're setting your clutch on your own, say you, you're at home, like the video I showed, that you, you, you make an adjustment on, on the clutch, all right, you're going to take a quarter, half, a full round, either you know, tight or loose, depending on where you want your engagement to be. All right, you're going to test it on the ground. You're going to give it some throttle, watch Watch where you feel feel the grab go. You're watching your RPM come up and you can feel exactly when the clutch is gonna hit and then you know where you either have to go high or low. So we need to make an adjustment. It's not quite there. I get out of the cart, kill the engine, get out of the cart. I make either a quarter, a half, or a full adjustment depending on how much I really need. If you're just incrementally wanting to go, just go quarter at a time. So you take your, your Allen key and you put it in the end of the of the bolt head or Allen head, and you just go like this. You go whoop, just just a little quarter, and do that to all six springs all the way around. Make sure to mark or you know keep an eye on what one you start with. Only do that. Get back in the cart, fire it back up, test again. Okay, you know now we're getting closer, or you're not close enough. You need to go more than that. Now, if you go through this whole process, you get it to where you you know ideally have your uh, engagement coming in where you're happy with it, take the clutch off the cart, or if you can do it on the cart, I suppose you can do that. Then you take your, your spring height gauge and go around and test them all and see how close they are to one another. I like to, you know, whether or not it's, you know, if, if you want it high, maybe you want it a tick higher, take your lowest setting and make all the springs even to that setting. If you want it a bit lower, maybe you take your highest setting and make them all, you know, just keep on tapping down, adjust them, make all those numbers even all around all six springs. So you have nice even wear. You don't want one spring, you know, running, a, you know, 440 thousandth and another one running a 220 thousandth. So that's, that's not going to make for good wear. It's going to make your, your clutch perform illy, 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 it, not very well. Um, sometimes, sometimes I use words anyway. Um, so, uh, that's what I do. Uh, if it, you know, you get, if you have your clutch service, great. I think that's fantastic. They'll set it. All right. They have a specific, you're running a clone, you're running a predator, you're running whatever you're running. Uh, it needs to have, you know, black springs at whatever height it is. And you're okay with that. You get on track and it works perfect. Fantastic. But if it's not exactly where you think it should be, or you're feeling that you need a better takeoff. If you're feeling you need, you know, maybe maybe it's not in the engine enough. Maybe you need to bring the engine down a little. Use a little more of that torque, uh, that low end torque of an engine. Uh, maybe engage that clutch a little sooner. These adjustments can be done at home by doing just what I said. You know, it's it, it's a real, it's kind of a pain, but it's not that hard to understand. Um, also, as as far as measurement goes. If you're, you know, in a pinch and you don't have a, a spring height gauge, just use, a, you know, like a, a ruler or something, maybe something with a little more incremental measurements on it. You put it on the deck and then measure up how high those are going to be and try and get them as even as possible. That's, it's probably one of, you know, some of the best advice I could get. You don't want an uneven clutch. You want, you, you know, if you're putting bolts in every, le every lever, every other lever, you don't want ones missing. You don't want your spring heights incorrectly matched you want them all the same and then adjust them all the same 
you know, with every adjustment. So uh, there you go, guys. I just, I, this was a, a conversation I had with a gentleman. He was talking about his, I believe it's 450cc. Uh, so a big, big boy, four stroke MX engine and where he wanted that clutch to come in. He thought maybe it was coming in a little too high and I suggested some things. I got some numbers for him. You know, maybe this would work a little better and that's how I would adjust my clutch if you didn't think it was quite right. Just do it at home, get it on the ground. You know, I, I prefer, you know, I have concrete in here, but I prefer not on a grass surface, but it can be done on grass if you need be. You're just, you're going to get some wheel spin and stuff. Um, I'd say a flat, nice surface, asphalt, whatever, your tires are going to get dirty. I'm sorry, but <laughs> uh, you don't want your clutch coming in too low or too high either. Uh, if it comes in too high, you're going to burn up clutch disc. Uh, coming too low, you're going to bag your engine, and that's going to make for ill performance on track. Did I use it? I used it properly at time, ill, uh, not properly performing on track. Anyway, all right, guys, <laughs> I've talked enough in this video. I appreciate every single one of you coming by, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.